So hi everyone. Yeah, thanks for having me on board at this conference. I'm excited to be here. So uh, yeah, I'm going to speak about getting up to speed with Dino. Um, I'm going to share my screen so we can get started with the good stuff. One minute. Okay, so that's my slide. And I'm sure everyone here can see my slide, see my screen. So yeah, I'm going to speak about getting up to speed with Dino. Uh, just with some TypeScript runtime that, um, yeah, so one of the most important factors we're going to place on is number one, how security works with Dino, how deployment also works with Dino, and really um, what it's like to really handle lightweight applications and how exactly it's going to look like when working with Dino. So let's get right into it. So um, my name is Shidik Bayomide. I am a senior developer advocate and developer program manager. So this is what I do most times. So I'm with GitHub as a GitHub star, um, the second in Nigeria. Oh, I didn't mention before, yeah, I'm from the awesome country of Nigeria. Um, it's somewhere in Africa and I'm pretty sure you've heard of Nigeria. So in one way or the other, if you contribute to open source or you're over Twitter, or <laughs> it's a really awesome country you should visit sometime. So um, also a culinary media developer expert and I like to refer to myself as a community evangelist because I love the community and I love working with the community. It's really exciting to me. So yeah, let's get right into it. So Dino is a modern secure um, runtime for both JavaScript and TypeScript. So it comes with TypeScript out of the box. Um, this runs on the V8 engine built from the ground up with Rust. So this was also built by um, the creator of Node.js and it's 100% built in the world. It supports TypeScript out of the box. You don't have to do any pre-configuration pre 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 for TypeScript. It comes with TypeScript out of the box. So, so Dino is secured by default. It doesn't have access to your local network by default, unlike Node.js, which has access to every single thing on your system. Like once you install Node.js on your system, but you downloaded um, the file, once you install it, it has access to your C drive, to so every single thing on your system automatically just by you installing it. But with Dino, it's different here. And I'm going to explain as we move forward. So Dino doesn't have access to things like your C drive by default, um, unlike Node.js. That's basically for security reasons, but think on, for things like Node.js, automatically, as I said earlier, when you install Node.js, it has access to every single thing on your system, including your C drive and every other thing. But for Dino, it doesn't have access to anything on your system unless you give it permissions to. And I'm going to explain how that works in Dino as we move forward. So um, let's get started with installing Dino. So firstly, Dino ships um, as a single executable with no dependency. So there's really nothing like Dino modules. So there's nothing like Dino modules like we have with node modules. So it's just like, it's just a single executable file like with like zero dependencies, not like dependencies in this case. So what you have to basically install via um, curl, um, you can get this URL on the, on the website of Dino, that's Dino land. You can get that Dino dot land. You can get this. Um, URL. So if you're using the Mac or Linux, you copy the curl URL and put that in your terminal and it's Michael installs Dino. If you're using Windows PowerShell, you just copy that and put it in your terminal and you're all ready to go with Dino. And next thing, you just have to get like a project set up. But yeah, let's move forward. So the next thing is, so once you put that in there, as you can see in my terminal screenshot below, um, you put a specific command that you say, I, right now I use a Mac. So um, I copy that command as a core command and I put it in my terminal, then it installs Geno you know, globally on my system. And so if you want to know if it's installed, you do something like Geno hyphen, double hyphen help or Dino double hyphen version. So help gives help. So Dino double hyphen help gives you all the command you can run while using Dino. Then Dino double hyphen um, version, same way we use it in Node and every other um, CLI tool we use is automatically gives us the version of the tool we are checking for, like for Dino hyphen double hyphen version gives us the version of Dino we are currently running on. So yeah, um, let's move forward again. I'm excited. So um, we're going to talk again how to serve um, Dino applications via remote URL. So basically Dino allows you to host files um, on remote URLs and execute, execute, execute them um, from the terminal itself. So you can host like your code base rather just like a simple script on a URL and execute those things, those um, scripts via like just that single URL you have hosted in your terminal. And it's as simple as really as you doing something like Dino run. That's the command. Every single time you want to run a Dino application on your system, you have to use the Dino run command if you want to get an output. So you're trying to run something from a URL, you have this little script that's going to output something probably on a Hello World script um, to you in your console, automatically you have to um, do something called Dino run, then the URL of what exactly you want to run in your application, in your terminal, as simple as that. So moving forward, as you can see, this is going to console.log automatically 
welcome to Dino, which is the content of this URL. So in the URL, I'm going to show you the next slide is we are considered logging in that terminal. Welcome to Dino. That's basically what we are doing. So we are Dino run then the URL of um, where our script is and give, give us an example, but like give us an output, basically what we are trying to run from our script in the link. So as you can see in the next um, slide, you can see I am consult logging. Welcome to Dino, as you can see um, right here. I am consult consult log. Um, welcome to Dino and this. And if I go back to my last slide, you can see that's what we have here in our terminal. So yeah, that's working with remote URLs in Dino, very straightforward and really awesome. And really like makes everything so lightweight when you're working with like large scale applications, makes everything like so lightweight. And I think it's something that like a lot of people need to use. So let's move forward. This is about the remote URL. Let's talk more about other ways to serve Dino applications. So after installing um, Dino globally in the system, as I said before, if you are using Windows, you use the curl command, and if you're using, um, Win rather if you're using the Mac or Linux, use the curl command, and that installs Dino globally on your laptop. Then if you're using Windows command, use the other command for the Windows laptop, and that installs Dino globally on your system. So after you're done with that installation, we are going to, right now, we're gonna, I'm gonna visually create um, um, a simple function that's gonna help you basically a hello, hello world um, simple script that's gonna output um, basically just hello world in the browser on port 8080. So we're gonna do that real quick. So the first step is number one, we're gonna create a new project folder called Dino example. That's the first thing we're gonna do. And the next thing is we're gonna create a file called hello-world.ts. So we know that JavaScript, like it's very glad for JavaScript, but one peculiar thing about Dino is that it supports TypeScript out of the box. So we're gonna kind of use TypeScript in this case. So once that's done, um, you're gonna create a simple function to serve hello world Three simple steps. Let's get right into the code. So right here, you can see we are importing um, a package from this URL and serving this to this port 8000 here. And so that we can really see what in the browser, what exactly in between console.log we are saying, we want to console log our response on lookout 8000, as simple as that. And um, yeah, lastly, create a for our wait loop where we're going to send a hello world message to as simple as that. So right into the output. Oh yeah. At least I forget the most important part. And I think, so this is, the, this is the major thing a lot of people always forget. And if you're working with Dino, um, you're actually gonna forget this a lot. But <laughs> that's the funny part, I still forget this part a lot because yeah, it's like, it's something really new and I'm excited about it still, but then this is something that you shouldn't forget. So every time, so Dino doesn't have access to your local network, as I said before, which is your local host and every other thing that has to be your local network, or in this case, your local host. Um, and this is for security reasons. So every time you want to execute a command in your terminal, you have to use a flag called the allow network flag. For example, you want to execute a command, you have to do something called allow network. So, um, okay, I'm going to show you the next slide. It's going to say Dino run allow network and the, um, then the path of the file you're trying to serve. So take a look at this. So now basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna run something called Dino run. That's the official command as I explained earlier. If you want to run a Dino application, so Dino run, you allow network access, then the name of the file you want to serve. And remember we created a simple, we're serving a simple hello world in our task file called hello world, hello iPhone world.cs. So we have that um, script already running. Um, make sure you have that running already before you run this command, unless you're not gonna get any else because your file is empty. And so yes, let's move forward. So once you automatically um, do something like, you know, run, allow network, then it paths to the file you want to execute. Um, it gives you this um, pop-up that says, um, so. Um, do you want your application Dino you know, to um, accept incoming connect network con connections? And so this part, you have to allow this part. So this is where you're giving um, Dino you know, access to your local network. So you're going to allow um, incoming connections from Dino you know, and you have to like, give permissions for these things. So this is, again, what gives me confidence that Dino you know, is super secure because for every single thing I have to do on Dino, you know, there, there are permissions for all of that. And you have to give permissions. If you don't allow network, he has no access. It gives you an error saying, um, I think, did I put that? Oh, I didn't. So um, yeah, so if you do not allow this, oh, <laughs> sorry about that. So if you do not um, allow this, automatically it gives you an error saying so you cannot access your network, so it cannot stop you anything. So, but in this case, you have to allow this. Well, yeah, let's move forward to the next thing. So the next here is um, once you are, once network has been allowed in the format slide, as I said later, as I said um, earlier, um, it is instantly stop to port 8080. Um, Rather, okay, I think I made a mistake right here. So this is 8,000 and not 8080 <laughs> as seen below. 
So once again, remember I said you allow network. So official command when you run anything, either it's via a remote URL or via um, a, a script you have running locally in the file. You have to do some Dino run. So Dino run, you allow network. Then after allowing network, you um, at the path of the file you want to execute. So once you do, once you've written that thing, simple line of um, command, you hit enter and automatically set it on um, localhost 8000. Because remember, we wrote the command say after once. Um, is a zone which is it on 8000 and that should also be console log. Then if we visit the lookout 8000 in our browser, we get to find this output saying hello world. And that's, our, and that's basically you running your first Dino script in the browser. Isn't that exciting? <laughs> I'm excited. This is your first time running Dino. Um, if this is your first time, it's exciting to me and I think this is really exciting to me too and should be exciting to you. So um, that's our hello world script, which is also being console logged if you can check that in your console because we specified that might you forget. So moving forward. So let's talk about making HTTP rest, um, requests in Gino. So um, at this point, so basically what we are doing is um, we are fetching some content using the fetch um, API and then constant logging our response simply as simple as that. So um, in this case, um, there'll be a, so here is where you put your um, forward fetch. So here is where you put your URL of what exactly you want to fetch. Um, remember we are gonna, so this, oh, okay. so. Um, point is to people who use carbon as sh. Um, there is also a feature where you can name files. Um, yeah, so this is going to be our hello. We're going to clean out. So it, just imagine we're cleaning out everything we have in our hello world file. That's hello world task file. So we're going to be cleaning out all of that and we're going to be adding this out. So we're going to be making a simple HTTP request in Dino. So we, we this is really just um, a simple like fetch API. We're going to write here and what we're gonna, basically going to be fetching here is a Dino example. So this is a Dino example. Um, this is a link um, from Dino. Um, it's a simple. So this file will be a basic app content. And as you can see in the next slide, we get straight in the terminal exactly what we fetched. So you can see here, I allowed network again. And remember, I said we are wishing in, like mentally in your head, try to clean out what you have in your Hello World file, then insert in this fetch API returns to fetch um, here. So we're trying to fetch what exactly the content of this um, the content of this URL and give that out in our browser, rather in our terminal. And that's exactly what we have here. And if you check this URL, um, the content of this URL is basically what we're fetching right here. And yeah, it's really as simple as that. And there's the more complex part, but this is really the basics. And this is basically just getting you up to speed on how HTTP request works in Gino. So yeah, this is the more exciting part. Every time, so once you're done building an application, the next thing really is to understand how to deploy your application to a live server so um, people can see officially what you feel. And one of the services you can use is Vasil. So um, for those who don't know what Vasil, so Vasil recently rebranded to Vasil from Zeit. So they're formerly called Zeit. They're really an amazing um, serverless structure where you can um, deploy your serverless applications and static applications from React to Angular, to any language, even node applications, to Dino, to Vasil. So I'm gonna show you how to deploy your Dino application that you've used already straight to Vasil and have a unique URL where you can see what you've deployed and you can share with anyone on the internet. Sorry, let's get right into this part. So first, um, you're gonna create um, a photo called API. That's the first thing you're gonna do. And um, we're gonna get our hello world task file inside that file. So this is basically the structure by which um, um, Vasil deploys their, um, bash their um, project. So automatically, we are going to be adding the Vasil runtime. So an automatically, it's going to go into the API file and guess what we have. If, so if this content is after the API file, it wouldn't be like Vasil wouldn't deploy it because this is the sequence by which Vasil deploys app. But we were, like before, we didn't do anything like creating an engine that has to be API file. We didn't do anything of that before because we are, that's, that's like locally. We're not deploying it anywhere. But as of right now, we're going to be deploying. We're going to create another folder called API. And we're going to get our hello-world um, task file in there. So drag and drop this API, this hello world file into that API file. So once that's done, um, we, yeah. Yes, yeah, so, okay, cool. Okay, cool. I think that's what I, yeah, so. Okay, I was a bit confused or whatever there. <laughs> so yeah, this happened. Let's move forward. So um, in this case, so we are importing all of this and basically what this script is gonna give us is we're basically um, trying to get the current version of Dino we are currently using and we are importing that from here. So um, Dino land and as you can see, welcome to Dino, then this is gonna give us the Dino version, then this amazing, um, I think this is a Stegosaurus, no, 
rhinoceros. I think so. No, that's not rhino. I have. Oh my goodness! And I watched so much of dinosaur movies then. <laughs> so weird. <laughs> I can't remember. If someone can help me out, I would love to remember the name. So sorry, I can't remember. For those who will be angry with me, that I can't remember the name of this dinosaur. <laughs> but yeah, we're gonna get so in on our output on the browser. We're gonna get a welcome to Dino. There's a Dino version and this amazing dinosaur here. Whoever can help me with the name, <laughs> that's for it. So next, we're gonna create a file called the vasil.json file. So for everything, to, for any application to be deployed on um, Vasil, we need to create a file called the vasil.json. But at the same time, we do not have to. We can go direct to this dashboard, or if we really want to use the GitHub tool, we just have to add the vasil.json file. Then you know, automatically picks that. Okay, hey, this is a Vasil application, and we need to deploy to Vasil. So now we're gonna create a vasil.json file. So vasil.json, and in the file we're gonna declare um, the version of our um, of Vasil, we are using the version two of the Vasil application. Then the name of the application is Dino example, as we stated earlier. The repository is public. Remember, you should have created this repository and all of that. Um, GitHub has this new feature where you can just do um, repo new. You can create like a new repo, like super easy. You should try that out. It's really like makes things faster for you. Then next, you use the same um, the runtime function. Then you do, as I said before, we have the um, now Dino app, Dino runtime that we can use when we are deploying our Dino application. So when you are deploying Dino application, you don't use the now node um, runtime, you use the now Dino runtime, which is currently on um, version 2.0, um, version rather 0.2.0. So that's what we does runtime, we use while deploying Dino applications. And yeah, you should use that if you want to deploy your Dino application. Let's move forward. So um, once that's done, um, once you've like gotten all your everything in your vasil.json file set up, so the next is to use something called now production. So um, that's now double hyphen then production. So um, you might also want to use the now now just just deploy and just get like a like a preview. But if you really want to like really deploy to production like straight up, you can just do like now double hyphen production. So basically, once you put it in your terminal in this rep one, as you can see here in my CLI, this is the name of the repository. Do you know hyphen example? My branch is master, and right now I am deploying to. And remember, I said you should have created um, your repository. And for those, I'm gonna just visually walk you through the, walk you through the process. So you're gonna go to GitHub, rather you're gonna go to repo.new, which is um, the shortcut for creating a new repository on GitHub. So repo.new first step. Then you put the name of your project, which can be Dino example or whatever you want to name it. Name of your project. After naming your project, you add um, make it a public repo. Then um, yeah, so that's that's really everything. You can add a git ignore file if you want to. You can add a readme if you want to. Um, so once that's done, you create a new repository. Then once that's done, as usual, you set the you set your remote upstreams that's on your local. So you communicate with what you have on GitHub. Then automatically, once you have set that remote upstream, you get this called something called master. And you can con you can commit directly to master in this case because it's just you working on this project. Then so I commit directly to master and. Once your product set up and your you okay, so once that's done, you push your projects that you have locally. So git push origin master, go straight to GitHub, and once that's done, we're good to go. So once you've done like all of the setup, now we're going back to initially what we have on our slide. So which is now production. So once you do that automatically, um yeah, um, yeah, this um yeah, okay, so this is the URL here. So the production URL appears here. So Dino API example, the Vasio, the app. So automatically being copied to the keyboard, as we can see right here. Next slide. So um, automatically, so the next step is to reach the production URL and view what's basically what's deployed. So remember I said in our URL we have, in our, in our terminal we have Dino um, hyphen example, hyphen Dino hyphen API hyphen example dot vasil the app. So if you want to access, remember if you want to access the API, like the outputs, you have to route directly to what the file, that's our task script file that we created or you kept into a, a, an API folder earlier when we were creating the project. So we go to the URL, we get like a directory display. That's kind of thing we get because like, it's, 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 like, it's, like, it's not React where we get like a preview. So in this case, this is like backend stuff. So we get a, like we get um, a directory kind of thing where there's like a, API file, and if you have a git not file, git not file show, if you also have um, like a readme file that's gonna show up, like just a directory for display. So in this case, you don't like, don't do, so you go straight to the URL, and what you do is do hyph, um, uh, rather um, forward slash API forward slash hello hyphen world. Do not add the TS, that automatically gets picked by the browser itself. 
So just type on hello world. And once you do, once you've written that in your URL, exactly the way it is right here in my um, screenshot, you basically, yeah, you get a preview. <laughs> really get a preview so unfortunately this is so weird i do not have a preview right here i'm wondering why that happened but yeah if you want to see a preview of um what exactly um yeah the output um yeah the hollow world output remember i said it's going to give it a version of node um they said they know have an api have an example does particular app forward slash api forward slash hello world you're going to find your hello world application right there that you can um use and basically see how this is just to the output so if you want to find a repo, my Dino example repo, where I kept all the code I spoke about in this um, talk. So just visit um, github.com for us as developer IO. That's my handle on GitHub. Then the name of the repo is Dino example. Then um, the deploy URL is, as you can see here, then Dino website also is dino.land. These are some resources that you might need on the long run. So yeah, um, thank you so much for coming to this talk. I'm excited that you are here and yeah, if you have any questions, I'll be around for the Q and A. You can follow also, yeah, you can yeah, you can also follow me on Twitter at developer.io or GitHub at developer.io also. So yeah, um, thanks so much.